All right, here we have a question where everyone's got a plan about how to do it. Um, none of the plans are the way that the SAT would probably have us do it, but that's okay. I honestly think the best strategy here is to arithmetize. Um, notice we do not need to pick a val or, or to solve for x, right? It's not a value, it is a placeholder. And so when that happens, we can make up a value and do the question with numbers instead of with algebra. So that's what I'm gonna do first, and then I'll talk about some of the other ways to do it. So I'm lazy, and arithmetizing is all about starting off lazy and seeing what happens. So my lazy number that I would pick is x equals zero, because then it means that I'm doing zero squared plus six times zero plus four, which just means that this expression is equal to four, because all the x's disappear. So what I'm looking for now is a, uh, another a choice that also gives me four. This is like my magic number. I, I need a choice that's equivalent to this expression, meaning that the number, the result, when I plug in zero, is also gonna be equivalent. It's gonna be four. So let's try A, what happens? So that would be zero plus three squared plus five. So that's three times, plus zero is three. Three squared is nine plus five. That is 14. That's not four, so that's gone. Choice B. 0 plus 3 squared minus 5. So again, 9 minus 5 is 4. But I have to keep going because sometimes I pick a number that works for multiple answers. So I have to just be thorough whenever I arithmetize and try every choice. So let's keep going. 0 minus 3 squared plus 5. Negative 3 squared is also 9 plus 5 is 14. So that's gone and 0 minus 3 squared minus 5, 9 minus 5 is 4. So it happened. I'm not surprised it happened. Um, this is a reason that a lot of people say never pick 0 when you pick numbers. I think that's bad advice. Pick 0. It takes like two seconds. And even if it goes bad, so what? We eliminated two answer choices, and now we just pick the next laziest number to deal with the ones that are left. What else is lazy here? How about x equals 1? Because then I'm doing 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 4. So that's 1 plus 6 plus 4, which is 11. So now my number has changed and my result has changed. So now I'm plugging in 1 to the two answers that are left. And I'm seeing which one gives me 11. So we try b and it's 1 plus 3 squared minus 5. That's 4 squared, which is 16, minus 5, which is 11. Let's look at D. 1 minus 3 squared, minus 5. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Not 11, meaning B is the answer. So there we go. Now, is that more time consuming than some of the algebra ways? Yes. I think it is here. But if you're not good with the algebra ways, you have no excuse for getting this question wrong. This is a case where you need to just like buckle up and force your way to this answer. And that's what the strategy sometimes do for us is they really give us a chance to get something that we wouldn't get otherwise. And so you got to see that this is an arithmetized situation that can save you 10 points that you really need to lock in. Now, the other way that people do it is they take these answer choices and they factor, or sorry, they foil out the, um, the, the, the parentheses part and then they see if it matches with the start. So let me just show you. So if I were to do that with our correct answer, we would have x plus 3 squared minus 5. Hopefully we know how to foil correctly and that's means we actually have to write out x plus 3 times x plus 3. That's going to be x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 minus 5. Can't forget that. So combine like terms. x squared plus 6x plus 4, which is what we have. x squared plus 6x plus 4. So fine. That also works. Now, 
The problem is, you know, you're probably doing that with a couple choices before you hit the jackpot and get it right. So it might also take time and there's also risk involved with the, the exponent. So people forget to do that. The way the SAT would probably have you do this is using something called complete the square which I bet a bunch of you right now are going like, oh yeah, I remember that. But you have no idea how to do it. Yeah. Completing the square is kind of like an, uh, uh, an algebra dead end. We all kind of learn it. We use it for like one or two things. And because it like never comes up, we forget it. And then we're screwed when it does eventually come up again. And honestly, on the SAT, you, could, you can get away with not knowing complete the square for... 99% of the questions. The only time it's really essential is when we have circles and we have a circle equation that we have to kind of clean up. Then we need to know how to do it. So the process is if we have x squared plus 6x plus 4, we take half of the b term. So the b term is that term that's on the x, so that's a 6. We take half of that, which is 3, and we square it. So that means x squared plus 6x, we stick a 9 in there. And then we've got a 4 that was still there from before. But we can't just go adding 9 to an equation. You can't do that. So we have to balance that out by subtracting a 9 as well. But the reason I wrote it in two colors is we're going to kind of think about it as two separate pieces. The x squared plus 6x plus 9 why is the 9 important? Well, because it, it causes a very special thing to happen. When we factor that blue stuff, we get x plus 3, I'll write it out, times x plus 3, which we, since it's the same term, we just write as x plus 3 squared. Hence the name, complete the square. We complete we complete an, a, an equation expression that would cause this very special thing to happen where we have the same factors twice. And so it's a squared term. So it's very special, but it requires us to kind of manipulate the equation. And so this four and this nine also need to combine and they get us the minus five. And I'm kind of smushing everything here, but there it is, x plus three squared minus five x plus 3 squared minus 5, same thing. And that's probably how the SAT book would tell you to do it. But, you know, do you remember it, complete the square? Do you remember it enough not to make a mistake? Because if you make a mistake, look at how similar those answers are. You're very likely to, you know, get it wrong because they all look so similar. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a problem. If you know how to complete the square and you're confident, that's the simplest, fastest way. But for the rest of us, we have these other options. This is not a question about completing the square. This is a problem solving question. So you have multiple tools where you can problem solve and get the answer no matter how good you are at algebra. You just need to persevere and lock in these points. It's a very important 10 points that everyone needs to get. This is the kind of thing you cannot give up on the test. You have to get this. So use a strategy, brute force it, get this answer, and then worry about what comes next.